Let's try that microphone then. That's the webcam microphone. I was trying to use the lapel mic and totally forgot to get that set. So you should be able to hear me now as it slowly catches up. <laughs> get the lapel mic off. So good morning. How is that? Okay, now we can see everybody see it. Boy, I got more of you in here than I thought there would be. Um, wanted to pop in and say surprise, hello. Uh, I know I didn't schedule this, uh, but uh, it's the 100th episode coming up in about two and a half hours. And so I thought I'd drop in and say hello. Uh, YouTube is also adding in several new features to their live stream chat. And so I'm hoping that they will have kicked in, um, including um, actually archiving all the chat. So hopefully everything that you guys are saying will actually be archived on the video now, which it hasn't been in the future. So, <laughs> yeah, it looks like everybody's much happier. So good morning, Tom and Leslie and Billy and Laura and Skaterpunk Barbie and Alex. Um, what's my opinion on the night before? I'll come back to your question in just a second, Alex, once I can actually talk better. Um, the 100th episode is coming up in about two and a half hours or so. It's almost 30 minutes long, so it's a little bit uh, different. It's got several clips from past episodes in it. Um, I've got 10 of them, actually, to be exact. There's a couple longer ones and a couple shorter ones, and then some narration and other commentary as well. So I really hope that you guys enjoy it. Um, it was a lot of fun to put together, and it was really funny looking back at some of the old videos and the quality and going, wow, I've come a long ways. <laughs> so... Um, so questions. Let's see. Uh, Alex was just asking me about Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, there are a couple of the songs in the movie I, I enjoy. I have actually seen the movie twice. Um, generally, I'm not real big into a lot of the Halloween stuff, so it's okay. There's nothing bad about it. It's just not what I would call my favorites. Are you um, Nightmare Before Christmas? Wait, what, Amber? Are you Nightmare Before Christmas? My daughter's sitting over there in the corner going, Are you Nightmare Before Christmas? I like it! So, she's not online on her computer right now, but I'm getting a very dirty look because I don't like it as much as she does. I gotta appreciate the animation. So, um, but I, I enjoyed it. Um, so, just not as much as she did, obviously. Uh, let's see here. What is my favorite theme park out of the ones you have worked in? Um, honestly, Helena, I cannot pick. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed every single one of them. They were different. Um, for me, it's almost like asking, you know, do I like, you know, what's do I like better? My favorite candy bar or my favorite meal? I don't know. I can't pick. Um, so I, I really thoroughly enjoyed all of them. Um, tough for me. To, it's tough for me to pick favorites for anything. <laughs> Tom, what time is the three o'clock parade? I actually, that comes up in the uh, video coming up this afternoon. So you will enjoy that. <laughs> um, let's see. Hey, a very special video. Thank you, Skater Punk Barbie. I look forward to it. You know, she does have a couple nice little videos on her channel if you want to check those out. Uh, video is no longer lagging. That's always a good thing. We actually had a major internet outage in my town yesterday. Um, we went down at like 8 in the morning, and it didn't come back up again until about 8 o'clock at night. Nothing. So I was actually really getting worried that I was going to be able to even get the episode uploaded last night like I usually do. So, uh, But it's up, and everything's working again. What are some good questions to ask Disney characters? The list of the That's a good question, Rachel. Uh, first thing I would say is know the character's story. Um, if you can ask them something about their story or tease them about something with it, that is a great way to go. Uh, as an example, to have a little bit of fun with Kylo Ren, if you did not see that video yet, when we were standing up there, I kind of looked at him and said, so when are you going to beat somebody that actually fights back? And he turned around and gave my video camera an awesome, dirty look. <laughs> it was great. Um, so if you can come up with something with the story, um, with a lot of the characters when I was there, I would actually show them old pictures I had taken of them or pictures of me working at PhotoPass and use that as a conversation point. Um, you know, or just silly little puns. When I met uh, Sadness and Joy, um, I told them, hey, my wife's middle name is Joy, but she's not here, so she's very sad. And they love that, and it, it made for a great interaction that way. So, uh, But something that can tie in with them, uh, if you've got a favorite cartoon, for example, for Mickey or Donald or Goofy, tell them about that or something like that. Okay. 
Um, so hopefully that gives you some good ideas, Rachel. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Reed, will you permit me to travel in your suitcase to Paris? Um, well, unfortunately, Reed, my wife and my kids have dibs on that, and I, it's just not going to work. Uh, my wife, in particular, has a mixture of happiness for me and being plain ticked off at the fact I'm going to Paris. So, uh, we're kind of on a, you know, I'm happy you're going on the trip, but please don't talk about it because I don't want to hear it. Although she did like when we were talking about what I was going to buy her on the trip as a souvenir. So, uh, what has been a surprise for me about being a YouTuber from Laura? The fact that people are actually watching my videos. Uh, when I started, I really didn't expect too many people to watch. So that has been incredible. Um, Peter New, what is my favorite Disney snack? Oh, uh, Dole Whip. Got to be the Dole Whip. Uh, right behind that would be popcorn, just because I'm a popcorn freak. But um, Dole Whip. Love Dole Whip. Uh, let's see. Diana, thank you some, for being around for so long. That's awesome. Uh, ben Lewitt, Miss 2D Animation. Yes, there's room for both styles. I like that comment. Uh, they fit different things. Um, I don't think you've seen the last of 2D animation by any means. Um, you know, you will see more coming up. So, uh, going to enjoy your train station castle. That's cool. What food should you try when you go to Disney World in July? Um, if you are going in July, you're basically going to be working on whatever counter service restaurants are there, unless you've already got dining reservations. Um, and I would say whatever you can get that's going to be close, use the Disney app to pay for your food in advance. And there's menus and all sorts of stuff on there. So use the app and that'll help you decide and then pick out what you're in the mood for. Um, I, I can't tell you what you like and what you don't. <laughs> have I visited Mall of America? No, I have not been up in that part of the country at all yet. Sometime I will get up there. Uh, who would win in a fight between Tarzan and Gaston? Oh, that's a... Good question, Sam. I don't have a clue. Favorite ride at Silver Dollar City? <laughs> okay, this is an easy question. The steam train, of course. At least when I used to work there. Um, as far as roller coasters go, probably um, Outlaw Run, but let's wait and see what happens with Time Traveler. Um, 91 days to Disneyland. Yay for you, Heath. Uh, does Donald have a soft spot for military members? All the characters have a soft spot for military members. They're very, very open about that. Um, Alex, I hope you do get to go to Disney someday. Um, they say that the average family, when I was there, say for five years to go to Disney, it's probably seven years now just because of the increase in costs. But it's very much worth it, especially if you can go during a time that's not summer and not holidays. Um, but even then, it's busy now. Have I ever been or am I planning to go to Disneyland Paris from Sam Nightmare? Sam, you have not been paying attention. <laughs> I'm going to be at Disneyland Paris in three weeks. Um, three weeks from today, in fact, is when I'm arriving. And my first day at the parks officially is on Friday, the uh, 23rd. I think that's what it is. Um, yes, I'm going to Disneyland Paris. And it's a complete shock. I announced that in my last live stream. And I've been talking about it some. I am very excited because I've never even been to Europe. So, no, very, very cool. Uh, lots of things I want to do. I will actually have a video that will come out right before I leave, that we'll talk about uh, some of the things I'm most looking forward to at Disneyland Paris. I am so excited about it, uh, because it's something I never dreamed I would get to do. Um, oops, trying to check something here. I'm getting a pop-up on my deal. Am I losing frames? Nope. Okay. Um, I never thought I was going to get to go to Paris, and I've actually got a viewer that is covering the vast majority of the costs um, he's a friend of mine as well, and so it, it's a trip that I can't afford, but is happening just because of miraculous things. So, But Sam, you got to pay attention. <laughs> uh, what part of Hollywood Studios is getting redone? Am I going to miss the most? Um, that's actually pretty easy. The Great Movie Ride. I loved The Great Movie Ride. Uh, the character drawing area is actually already gone. That is now the Star Wars launch bay. So when you watch my video, if you watch the... A vlog from Hollywood Studios that I put up last week. When I'm walking through and you see the stairway that goes up, that's actually the little corner there and the Incredibles used to meet right there. And then if you went down those stairs, right to the left was where Mickey used to be. So that's where those were. Bye, Random Family Vids. Good to see you. Um, stopping advertising would reduce crowds and save money. Uh, not that much, Clayton. Um, 
there's a whole big complicated thing there. <laughs> so, oh yeah, Peter, it has been a year. It, it's amazing that it's been that long since I've had people supporting me. So, um, there is a number of things in the works after Paris. Uh, some of which I've talked about. My wife doesn't know some of them. Um, we are def well. I can't say definitely because we're not on the plane yet. But uh, we're planning a two-week trip to Israel at the end of June. Um, my, uh, I've got family members that are paying for my wife and I to go there for our 25th anniversary. So it's not a theme park, but we will still definitely be vlogging that trip. Um, there is a good chance it's not in stone again, but we're hoping that we will get to do a short cruise at the beginning of July. And then we will also have family visiting us here from both sides of the coast. And we will definitely be doing Silver Dollar City and several other things. So there will be a number of things pop up that way. And who knows what else is in the works. So, uh, Ben, I wish I could enjoy Phantom Manor, but it is closed for a long-term refurbishment. Um, they are completely updating it, and so it's not going to be open when we're there. Everything else is supposed to be open when we're there. Just not Phantom Manor. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Hi from Melbourne. Hi, Jesse. Very early, but you don't care. That's okay. I knew it was kind of a weird time for most people. Uh, would I ever come to Australia? I'd love to. I don't have money for it. Um, but if something happens like is happening with Paris, you never know. I would absolutely love to go, though, at some point. Um, it, it's just a matter of budget and money and so many other things. And, and since we basically live off of my wife's teacher salary, because the church I pastor in, I really don't get paid. And so... There's not a lot of money for trips, so even as much as we've traveled has been crazy compared to what we're used to. Um, Nicole, do I play video games? Um, when I have time, which isn't a whole lot and isn't real often. Um, so I, I'm not a big gamer anymore, just simply, not because I don't like them, but I just don't have opportunity. Um, I'm more of a strategy game person, so uh, Star, War, ugh, Star Wars Online I played for quite a while, Lords of the Rings Online. Um, I have been playing Elder Scrolls Online for a little bit. I just didn't have time to keep up. Um, Civilization V I still play. Um, I do have Planet Coaster, and I've played it like an hour. And that was since Christmas. So, yes and no. <laughs> What's the best time to go to Disney World? Well, Michelle, I would have told you in the past that January and February were some of the best times in September. Um, because they would be empty. However, if you watch my video on Magic Kingdom that'll come up this weekend, or Tuesday probably, I'm actually working on it now, uh, you'll see that what was supposed to be a slow day was not slow at all. Um, there is no longer such a thing as a slow off-season at Disney. If you use the score of 1 to 10 on how busy days were, with 10 being like Christmas where they're closing all the parks, it used to be if you went in September or January that the parks would be about 2 or 3, meaning they're pretty quiet. This last trip in January, um, the slow day was probably about a five. Um, it it was much crowded, much more crowded than I thought. So, um, but yeah, otherwise, when you can go, it's still better to go off season if you've got kids and you can pull them out of school. I would still encourage you to do that because it will be less crowded. Summer it's just hot and crowded. Um, don't go the two weeks around Christmas. So, wish I could visit the parks in the Netherlands. I've heard about Efteling. Um, absolutely would love to go there. Um, I actually have family roots in the Netherlands, too. My grandmother was an Olafiers, and I can't say it properly in Dutch, um, but it is a Dutch family root, and so I can actually, um, if I go onto the Dutch genealogy site, which is, uh, we was we, I think is how you say it, um, there's actually a, a bunch of family history I pull off of there when I do genealogy, so. Uh, let's see, preferred popcorn flavors. I'm boring with that. I prefer just either plain or butter. Um, I've tried various flavors of popcorn, and um, there was a cheddar one that wasn't too bad. Cheddar and bacon, actually, that a viewer sent me that was that was pretty decent. But otherwise, I tend to go uh, plain, boring, normal. Um, I love I love the popcorn. I make my whirly pop. That's awesome. So uh, let's see. Should play Disneyland Adventures. <laughs> I just don't have time, Clayton, to be able to play. Um, what's my opinion on Stitch's Great Escape closing down? Oh, this is actually... We're weird on this one. Uh, Stitch's Great Escape was probably my son's favorite attraction in Magic Kingdom. He's a big Stitch person, and he just thoroughly enjoyed it. My daughter actually enjoyed it, too. And so when we were at the parks, we'd go 
write it, I don't know if write it's the right term, but we would go see it all the time. And it didn't bother me. Um, was it the greatest? No. Was it as bad as a lot of people make out? No. Um, I'm kind of sad that they're closing it, sort of, but at the same time, I, I'm optimistic they're bringing something better. Um, I know a lot of people like to talk about Alien Encounter. Alien Encounter did not belong in Magic Kingdom. It just didn't. It might have worked at Hollywood Studios, maybe, but uh, we'll see what they eventually do with it. Um, let's see. If you go to Disney, how well would it work on a budget? Um, very simply, if you can't afford a few thousand dollars, you're probably not going to afford Disney. I did Disney World on this last trip I took on a major budget uh, using Friends for Free Admission, stayed with a friend instead of a hotel, um, worked on eating outside the parks and everything, and I still spent about $1,000, um, a little bit less. You can add on hotel rooms and pay tickets, and I would say if you want to do four or five days at Disney, you're looking approximately $1,500 a person. And it can go up depending upon how many things you add on. So if you don't have that kind of money, either start saving it now or just expect to not do Disney. Unfortunately. Sorry. Um. <laughs> Let's see. And, and that's basically coming from within the States, too. Uh, let me try to jump down. Yes, Stitch's Great Escape closed right after Christmas, Nicole, and it's done. They're not going to reopen it. Ah, uh, hungry for popcorn. I'm tempted to make some. Ooh, if I could design a th new theme zone and eat theme park. Um, I'm terrible about stuff like that. I'm not that creative. Um, I copy off of other people. I'm sorry, Sam. I'm boring. <laughs> Let's see. Um, any plan to visit a theme park in Canada in the future? Uh... There sort of is. It's not a plan. It's a desire. Uh, my family on my dad's side actually goes back to the people who originally settled Quebec City and Quebec and Montreal. And I can actually, there's a big statue and park there dedicated to the founders. And there's like six or eight of the names on that statue that are my ancestors. So at some point, I really want to get up to Quebec, uh, Quebec City, Montreal in that area and just walk all these places where my ancestors walked. And as part of that, of course, there's um, a couple theme parks up in that area that I would definitely want to go to. Um, and then maybe make a detour down in Ontario as well. Uh, so at some point, I have no idea when that will be, though. Um, next year is looking like another trip to Florida. I have no idea if we'll do theme parks on that or not. But our church, uh, the Symbols of God, has their big uh, every other year business meeting down in Orlando next summer. And so we'll probably go down to that. I'm hoping we can make it work. Um, so it's looking at least two years away, and that's if budget happens for it. So, so we'll see, M.M. Kenny. Um, let's see. Yeah, if you're in Europe or something, um, Disneyland Paris is actually much cheaper than Disneyland or Disney World or Disneyland in the States. Uh, we are actually paying, um, even with the increase, I think we're paying, it's going to be like 160 or 180 euros. So it's about $200. And we're buying season passes. So even though we're only going to be there for just a few days, it's cheaper for us to buy an annual pass at Disneyland Paris than it is to get like a five-day ticket at Walt Disney World. So if your budget, think possibly about Disneyland Paris. It may work better in your budget. Um, you've got the plane tickets depending upon where you're coming from. But that may not be as much as you might think it is, because especially since you have plane tickets down to Florida anyways. So, thank you something about that. Um, Jesse, no, I have not played EVE Online. Sorry. Um, let's see. Uh, the roleplay experience, it's not going to be for... David Schmaltz is asking about the roleplay experience for Star Wars Land. It's not actually for Star Wars Land. Uh, they are building a brand new resort hotel that is going to be themed for Star Wars. Um, there are mixed... Uh, the mixed comments about whether it's actually going to connect to Star Wars land or not. Um, so I really don't know if it will. But the role is actually going to be for while you were staying at that Star Wars themed resort hotel. And that's what they're talking about with that. It sounds very neat. It also sounds very, very, very expensive. So <laughs> what do I think of anime? Oh, I hate anime. Anime's terrible. No reason for anybody to ever like anime. Right, Amber? 
I am getting a very mean look from my daughter right now. <laughs> um, I don't mean any of that, but my daughter is very much into anime. She she loves anime, which is why I make fun of it, right? Okay, to try to approximate her expression, I'm getting up. <laughs> uh, Melanie White, best month to visit Disney World. I actually just answered that a few minutes ago. So, um, again, anytime the kids are in school is a better time to go, but there's no such thing as an off season. Um, strollers on the bus at Disney, uh, it depends upon how big the stroller is. It, it very much depends upon the stroller. If it's a huge bulky one, it can be a pain to get onto any bus. The Disney buses are just like any other regular bus. So how easy is it to get a stroller on a bus? <laughs> um... Let's see. Uh, Dust Gem paying $3,000 for him to stay at a uh, week at the Disney Resort. Does that include your dining plan, Dusk? Um, also, uh, I'm assuming that you've got the hotel and the Disney tickets and your plane fares there. So that's your main stuff. But um, I don't know if that includes your food. And then, of course, you've got souvenirs and the photo pass. Uh, buy the memory maker ahead of time. You're going to save money. I know it sounds expensive. That was a chunk of my money. Um, it's $160 or so up front, but I came home with 400 photos. So um, that's going to be part of your budget if you haven't paid for that already. Um, haven't heard anything about Illuminations getting replaced. So I'm not sure we heard that one, Helmuth. Sorry, I have not seen anything at all about Illuminations getting replaced. Um... Actually, uh, Skater Punk Barbie, we're getting the uh, pass that's the step below the Magic Plus. So it's like 180. It's not the Discovery Pass, which has all the dates blocked out. It's the one just above that. If I could get Brian Hull to collab with me, what would we do together? Oh, gosh. We would probably have a blast together. Uh, but but Brian Hull is out in California, and I'm here in Missouri. And I'll be honest, I don't know if Brian even has a clue who I am. Um, he's based at Disneyland, and I'm in the middle of everywhere and nowhere. So... <laughs> Um, what are magic bands? Uh, Julia, I've, I've actually, um, one of my videos before I left actually talks about magic bands and how they work. And if you stay at the resort, it can work as your room key, your credit card, or to bill to your room, your photo pass card, your, uh, park tickets, and also, uh, your fast passes, and everything like that. So, um, I've talked about that in a few videos, so I don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about something I've already covered. Um, let me see if I can pull up the video number for you. It is... Um, and I might even be able to get a copy of the link in there for you. Uh, let's see, where did it go? Clothing, character pin trading, budget, sunglasses. Um, I can't remember which one it was. But um, you can see mine sitting on the shelf there. It basically... It ties in to your fast passes, your t park tickets, and everything else. You can use the app on your phone to connect your uh, Magic Band to all of that, and it, it's wonderful. Um, even if you're not staying at Disney Resort, get a Magic Band for one person at least. Can I speak or understand a little bit of French? Um, no. <laughs> it's, I'm actually trying, Sam, to work hard on getting a few French phrases down at least. Um, I speak Spanish. And I'm terrified that when I'm at Disneyland Paris here in three weeks, that I'm going to keep trying to speak Spanish while they're speaking French. And so I know that's not going to work real well. Um, I know that it's very open to English speakers because they're so close to the UK. They have a lot of British tourists. So I know that there's a lot of English there. I'm not too worried about it, but I am trying to learn some French for it. Um, what was my favorite place to eat at Epcot? Whichever one I was eating at. <laughs> Wow, Nicole, $3,500 for a family of four, including dining and memory maker. That is an impressive package. Does that include your plane tickets or your way there or not? Um, even if it doesn't, that's still a pretty good deal for Disney World. Uh, do I know what next new ride or refurbishment coming? Time Nerd, you can actually look those up on Disney's website. They do actually list all the upcoming refurbishments on schedule, so that way you can keep track of them. Um, easy to find with a quick Google search. So I don't have it memorized. <laughs> so, um, Yeah, Ben, 
that's interesting because um, Disney Parks and nobody else has announced the Illuminations is disappearing. So um, color me skeptical until I see it um, about Illuminations disappearing. Good morning, Richard. How are you doing? Don't worry, I'm not opening mail, so your box is still sitting over here. <laughs> um, let's see. Just kind of skimming down here. What do I think about going getting an annual pass to Disney if you go twice a year? If it is in the States, probably not. Because the annual passes in the U.S. tend to be very expensive. Unless you were going for many days. I mean, if you're going for the equivalent of three weeks or so during the course of the year, then it might be worth it. If you're going for less than that, it's probably not going to be in the States. Now, Disneyland Paris, on the other hand, it's about four days in the parks pays for the annual pass. So, huge difference. It depends upon where you're going. Um, am I a Muppet fan? Clayton, you didn't watch my video on the Hollywood Studios. <laughs> you need to go back and watch that. Yes, I'm a huge Muppet fan. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Um, am I going to open on the 18th? Yes, Richard. Uh, on the 18th, and I, I will talk about this in the video that's getting posted today in two hours or so. Um, I will be having another live stream on March 18th, which is a Sunday afternoon. Um, I will be opening up mail, and I've actually got several packages here already, so there's a chance I might have to move the mail call up a little bit, depending upon how much more mail I get. Uh, but I will be opening mail. Um, and if I do, Richard, open up your box ahead of time, I will make sure you know. Um, I will also be talking about more about the trip to Paris at that point, and I will be announcing contest winners at that live stream. What contest? You've got to watch the video in about two hours to find out. So there we go. Uh, Gailey Kwong. Okay, you're actually mentioning something. Should Disneyland do something about their homeless employees? Uh, there's been a couple articles, if you're not aware of this, that has talked about the Disney employees are struggling to make it. Well, the problem with that article is it leaves out a huge amount of pertinent information. For example, such as the fact that L.A., Los Angeles, just the city, has 55,000 homeless people. The problem with the homeless Disney employees is not Disney. It is California and the extremely ridiculous cost of living. And the truth is, if you're working at a theme park, I don't care what theme park, you're not going to make money to live on. That's just a fact of life. Um, and I don't mean to sound heartless here. I really don't. Because California has a lot of issues. They need to do something to get their cost of living under control. That's not Disneyland's problem. That is California's problem. And I say that as somebody who lived in, grew up, met my wife, went to college, and had my kids in California. So I've lived in Sacramento, met my wife in Santa Cruz, lived in Oxnard, which is just north of L.A. I've got family in California. It is a ridiculously expensive state to live in. The house that my dad lives in in Sacramento, which is a cheaper area in California, is about $350,000 or more for a 1,300-square-foot home. I can buy a home where I am living now in Missouri, same exact type of home, for $100,000 or less. So this isn't Disneyland that's causing this. Um, and Disneyland is actually paying their employees a fair wage. They're paying more than the other theme parks out there. You don't hear people saying Six Flags should pay for their homeless employees or Knott's Berry Farm should be paying for their homeless employees. But they'll point at Disneyland, even though it's already paying more than the others. So I've I've got a real problem with the way that article was written, saying it's Disneyland's fault, and it's not. Um, to give you an example, when we were in Oxnard, uh, when we lived there, and this was back when my kids were little, so from, oh goodness, up till 2004, so it was 1998 to 2004, we moved into an apartment there, a two-bedroom townhome apartment that was about 900 square feet. When we moved in in 1998, Sorry, 1996. Get my dates right here. No, I was right. 1998. It was $750 a month. When we moved out in 2004, that same apartment was $1,400 a month rent. And there was no reason for it. So, there you go. Um, <laughs> I know, probably not the whole long tirade you were expecting, Gailey. I'm sorry. But, yeah, that's one of those things. What's my favorite song? I do not... 
Green Rover, I'll give you an easy answer to this. I don't pick single favorites because it's absolutely impossible for me to pick a single favorite of anything. So, uh, yes, um, my daughters are pointing out, but you have been recently obsessed with The Greatest Showman. Right now, I have been playing The Greatest Showman soundtrack a ton. Um, have absolutely loved it. So, um, it's my most played right now. I can't say it's my favorite all time, but it's definitely up there. Uh, let's see. Favorite table service restaurants. Um, that's tough, Rachel, because we didn't usually have money to pay for table service restaurants. Um, as cast members, we would get a holiday discount package at the end of the year, give us some discounts, and we'd go visit a couple that way. But we generally did not visit table service restaurants at Disney just because they were way outside of our budget most of the time. Um, Jupiter guys, how many tickets do you get when you work seasonal for Disney, and can you go in and out when you want on days off? Um, the ticket thing is has changed. Um, as a cast member, you can always go into the Disney parks when you want. If you're working at the regular Disney theme parks in, at Walt Disney World, you can go into any of the four major parks anytime just using your cast ID. As far as the number of tickets goes, it varies on whether you are a, a college program or not, seasonal, part-time, full-time, what your position is, where you rank in it, um, and so it can change. When I was there, um, when I first started, part-timers would get 12 what were called main gate admissions a year, which was the day that you could let guests in with you. That went down to six when I had left. Um, I'm sorry, it was 10 when I started and went down to six. And so it will change. I don't know what it is right now. So um, let's see. Do I still do the Disney point unintentionally? Yes, I do. Um, not always, but most of the time. So, um, how do I feel when staying off site? Uh, were there hard parts to it? I had a rental car. I was staying with friends. It was great for me. Um, I didn't have to pay for parking because I was staying with friends who were cast members. And so they flagged me in with the parking every single time. Um, except for like my first day, I did have to pay one day. Um, so expect to pay for parking, but I kind of enjoyed having the rental car. It was quicker and easier to get around most of the time. So, but that's if you're going to be jumping around. Uh, Jesse, uh, Blackfish documentary. Personally, I think Blackfish was a load of garbage. Um, it has been proven that 80% of their facts in it were fiction, and yet there was no way for people to refute it. Um, it has hurt SeaWorld, I think, very unfairly. Um, I'm not a fan of it at all. Personally, I, I wish that the people who produced Blackfish would have the same kind of thing done to their own personal reputations that they did to SeaWorlds and see how they like it. Um, I know that's kind of mean-spirited. Uh, it was not cool. I am not... I wish that Disney had sued them for libel because... Or not Disney. I wish SeaWorld had sued them for libel because they very much could have and won. So, um, let's see. Oh, good, Richard. I'm happy that you liked the episode. I was hoping you'd seen it already. So, um, it was a lot of fun to make. A lot of fun. Is the Rose Garden gone at Walt Disney World? Yes, it is. And in the Magic Kingdom vlog, which will be early next week, you will get to see what it looks like now. I do actually point it out at one point. Um, Silver Dollar City, if you're going to be there three or four days, yes, Billy, it is absolutely worth the season pass. Um, there's two ways you can do it. You can either get your ticket, you can buy the season pass at the gate, or you can buy a regular ticket at the gate, come into the park, and then upgrade it to a season pass. But the season pass is going to cost you about the same as two days at the park. So if you're going for four days, yeah, you've definitely paid for your season pass. Um, <laughs> so uh, it, Six Flags and Silver Dollar City and Sear Fair Parks, it's usually, if you're going to be at the parks two or more days, it's usually cheaper to get a season pass. Have I ever been to Legoland? I have been to the one in California. Loved it. Maybe one of these days I'll, I'll get a video. My kids were little at the time. Uh, we still tease my daughter about her driving skills there. So, <laughs> um, Have I ever been inside a Disney character outfit? Every time I dressed up as a photographer, I was a Disney character in an outfit. So, um, I can tell you, Sam, I have taken a look at what the characters wear. I have an idea of what they feel like. And that's probably a good indication of the answer there. While still preserving the magic. So, <laughs> thank you, Skater Punk Barbie. Um, let's see. If I could do a single thing at Disney World, what would I do? Flight of Passage at Pandora again. Oh my goodness, that was cool. 
And then right behind that would be Tower of Terror. So, uh, Melanie, I would love to come to Minnesota. I've got to find budget and time. That, that's the biggest answer to almost all of the, you know, will you ever come to trips? It's time and money. And both of those are at a premium for me. Uh, with my wife being a teacher and me being a pastor, it's tough. So, but anyways, it, it's been about 35 minutes. I'll take a few more minutes for questions, but I wanted to say hi to everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and participating. Uh, I love the interactions, that, uh, the questions. YouTube is actually going to be doing a neat thing here, and I don't know if they've done it yet, where in the past I would actually save the live feeds, and it wouldn't show all the chat afterwards. And I'm waving right here because this is where I've actually got my chat. Uh, um, but... They're actually going to be including that with the live feed archives now. So if you go back after this one and watch live feeds, you'll actually be able to see the chat as it's happening again. And that'll be awesome. So people know what on earth I'm talking about and why I'm responding. So, Oh, Richard, Tower, if you ever liked the Twilight Zone, it's got a couple small stomach drops, but the ride itself is so worth it. It, it really is. Do I like to mess and joke with my kids every once in a while? Oh, no. I am I never joke with my kids. I'm straight, dead, serious with them all the time. They think I am the most unfunny, humorless person they've ever met. Right, Amber? What? What? She's got her headphones in now, so she can't hear me. <laughs> I tease them all the time. That's what kids are for, is to harass. Got to get your revenge for them driving you nuts. <laughs> Bonjour. Let's see. Oh, goodness. What do I think of the Walt Disney Studios announcement? Um, I'm assuming TPC 264, you're talking about the changes coming to Disney Studios in Paris. Um, and I'm actually quite excited. D Walt Disney, or Disneyland Paris has two parks. Everybody knows about Disneyland. A lot of people don't know about Disney Studios, which is a small park. And I've heard a lot of people say it's about a half-day park. Well, they're about to launch a major expansion into it. They're going to get rid of the tram tour, which I'll get to ride when I'm there at least. But then they're actually going to expand the park out behind that way at a lake. And then they're putting in Frozen and Star Wars. And I'm trying to remember what the other one was. Um, I think it's Pixar. Um, and yeah, Marvel, thank you. And yes, just expanding that whole area. And it will majorly change the park, I think, for the better. So it would be great. What would be the one best attraction? There is no one best attraction of anything, David. <laughs> there are tons of attractions that the five-year-old will love. So, um, yeah, it's there's no way you can narrow. Trying to put Disney at one attraction just doesn't work for anything. <laughs> so, yeah, Rock and Roller Coaster at Disney Studios in Paris is changing. Um, I think that's the one that's becoming Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Tower of Terror is not changing there, which is good. Um, what do I think of Tower of Terror getting replaced by Marvel? I have not been on it, so I cannot say what the new ride is like, but I'm disappointed being such a huge Tower fan that I am. I love Guardians of the Galaxy. I think that a Marvel land in California is perfectly appropriate. I'm just not real happy with them changing Tower of Terror for it. Is there more than one flavor of Dole Whip? Yes, actually there is. The original is the best one, but they do actually have a swirl and um, a plain vanilla and a couple others as well. So, Iron Man and Avengers. Okay, why was I thinking Guardians of the Galaxy, TPC 264? I don't know. I'm confused. Yeah, Iron Man and Avengers may be better. So, um, with the roller coaster, I think that'll fit anyways, especially since Aerosmith, it, as time does, Aerosmith is getting old. They're... They look nothing like they do anymore. So, uh, do I think they replaced someone in Florida? The Tower of Terror? No. People would have a huge fit. I think it's safe. Um, hi, Jake. Yes. Oh, thank you so much, Richard. I appreciate that. That'll go for France. <laughs> so, um... Julia Wilkie, we actually, around here in Missouri, we have a lot of places that do something that tastes almost exactly like the Dole Whip. If you've ever seen one of those little trailers or whatever that has the little hula girl on top, stop at one of them. Um, they may very well have the Dole Whip. So, thank you again, Richard. Appreciate that. Let's see. Ooh, I hadn't heard about that TPC. Ugh. Dance party. 
Hopefully they'll do that in the pavilion area. Huh. Weird things. Um, let's see. Yes, Richard is Canadian. I can even tell you what town he's in for your blood viper, but I'm not going to do that. Disneyland or Disney World? Uh, classic question. Um, I am actually a Disneyland person, even though I worked at Disney World for five years. Uh, Disneyland is Walt's Park. There's more in it in Disneyland itself than Magic Kingdom does. If you take two of the Disney World parks and start to combine them and you come close to what's in Disneyland, but Disneyland is smaller, it's more intimate, you can feel Walt's touch on everything there. Um, so the, I still like Disneyland better, even though it's been 15 years, almost. About that. Yeah, it's been a long time. I'm overdue. Um, well, that's good to know, Heidi. I'm happy. I've heard generally good reviews about, um, about the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. It's just not Tower. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, so Ryan's, Ryan's channel mentions, yeah, if you see somebody that says a pineapple soft serve, it's basically about the same thing. There's something a little different about the Dole Whip. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because it's at Disney. But a pineapple soft serve is what they are. So, well, it has been 45 minutes almost. So I am going to get ready to head out. I want to make sure that I get everything all set to make sure that uh, the new video is published on time. So I don't want that to be forgotten or mistaken. Um, and like I, said, I know that you guys are going to absolutely love it. So I want to make sure I get it there. Um, do I like Test Track? I love Test Track Green Rover. I like the old version of Test Track better. Am I going into Paris itself? Yes. Uh, we will be there for six days? Six or seven days, something like that. We're going to spend two days the weekend and actually go into Paris itself. There's no way I'm going to get that close to Paris and not go into Paris. Uh, so we will spend a couple days into Paris uh, checking out the sights and sightseeing, doing the tourist stuff. Um, and then we'll be spending a few days at Disney. So we will be doing both. So excited about it. Um, as the time gets closer, I will probably post up a little bit of an itineration. Um, because I'm traveling with other people, I'm not at freedom to say quite everything we're doing and when and where um, because I don't want to intrude upon them. If it was my family, I, I'd do it. But um, but I will give more details as the time comes closer. We do have a meet and greet. There's actually two meet and greets coming up. There's one at Silver Dollar City on March 16th, a Friday. And then there's going to be another one at uh, Disney Village at Disneyland Paris on Monday, March 26th. So hopefully I'll be able to meet some of you guys there. And I'm going to have to buy a French beret. I'm actually debating that. I really am. <laughs> so um, it has been wonderful to have everybody join me on here. So thank you so much for joining on. Like I said, I know it was a surprise. And so I'm, I'm pleased with how many people have joined up. Am I worried about safety of traveling to France? Nope, not a bit. Not even slightly. France is a safe country. So... So thank you so much, everybody. Be sure, like I said, about an hour and 45 minutes until the 100th episode is up. Hope that you really enjoy it. Thank you so much for joining, everybody. And have a wonderful day. Let me see if I can... <laughs> Bye!